it's now time for data-driven business processes. This is uh, powered by SAP, and now I'm here with Giacomo Coppi. Giacomo Coppi, who's team leader, digital supply chain and manufacturing, Italy and Greece of SAP. Welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me us today. Now, please introduce us to the events because we're going to hear also from <coughs> uh, a series of witnesses from the front line of companies that work with you. How about driven business processes? Well, today, yes, we, we will see from the experiences provided by our partners a lot of cases with our customer that can provide value to the audience. But at first, I want to highlight how SAP has been involved in the industry for now since the idea of this concept when it was a, an academic discussion at the time, I mean, 10, 10 years ago when 2020 was a target of possible company strategy. And uh, we, have been, we, have, we had the chance to, to develop uh, application and to support our customer across uh, the years for supporting them in the digital transformation. And we are very proud today to announce the Industry, industry 4.0 now. That means the capability to support Industry 4.0 with the technology and with the application that are able to support our customer to become intelligent enterprise. That means for us uh, that we are able to support our customer that want to have the customer at the center of their business processes. I know it's just a very common trend to say, but it means for us that we are able now to provide the customer to have a digital twin of their value chain, able to support the customer and the customer of their customer in, uh, in a world that is definitely changing and it's changed all the time. And so we want to support our customer. They want to reinvent their production in order to support a new customer that is strongly more demanding than the past. And we want to, our customer able to become an intelligent enterprise, not just for themselves, but within the full ecosystem. So able to connect the entire company and not just the company, but the, the, the full ecosystem across the value chain. Uh, what does it mean? It means that we want to support our customer that want to have intelligent product. It means a product that are able to become intelligent since the beginning since uh, the idea, when the company started to develop their idea in the research and development department, when they collect data from the market, when they collect data from the customer, the suppliers, in order to have product that respond to the actual market request with the right material, with the right process, with the right price, and built in an intelligent factory that is not just a hyper-connected factory, but is a factory that is able to collaborate and to adapt through intelligent asset to respond to the market request that is now uh, actually definitely more stronger than the past. And we, we want to support customers that aim to have even the lot of one. So they are able to, to answer to the question and to the market request by the customer of the customer in terms of one. And we want to support also our customer when they want to have empower people. That means uh, they want to provide to the, to the right people the right information in order to, to do the right job at the right time. And to do that in a safe environment, of course, very, very important at this time, and in a sustainable ecosystem. And uh, what are the main tools we provide? We want to support customers that aim to destroy the silos, the typical organizational silos in the company, and they want to see the full process, the full value chain deployed in order to make the experience of the customer the best experience ever. So we want to support them from design to plan, to manufacture, to deliver and operate. So our application, our technology support a customer that wants to, to follow this path in the digital transformation. And last but, last but not least, they want to do it leveraging the network. I mean, leveraging the full community of stakeholders that are involved in a manufacturing process, in a business process overall. And uh, as an example, in this case, uh, we are part of the Open Industry 4.0 Alliance. That means the alliance that's, that involve a lot of digital players, mechatronic players, and so on, that are able to reduce the bottlenecks for integration, system integration, and uh, standards, and so on, in order to make all of us able to provide successful projects for our customers. And among the successful projects today, we are going to experience some of them, thanks to the partner that have accepted the invitation to, to be with us. They are all a very relevant mm -hmm. partner in our ecosystem, covering manufacturing, but not only. And I think, I think that the project they are going to describe speaks by themselves. 
Well, so let me introduce all the other speakers. You can see them, they are already connected. We do have Alessandro Casartelli, SAP Manufacturing Consulting at Derga, Paola Cairella, Pre-Sale Manager at VAR BMS, Gianni Pelizzo, Partner at Syscons, Andrea Stella, Managing Director of uh, Esperia. Now, Gianni Pelizzo, let me start with you, Syscons, uh, about you know, when we talk 4.0, for sure, Planning and scheduling systems are very relevant to organize the workload into the production units. So what's your experience? What can you tell us and share your story with us? Yeah, mm, are, are you hearing me? Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we are, a, let me say, very, very um, specialized consulting boutique and supply chain and manufacturing. Uh, we are based in Italy, but we work a lot also abroad in Germany uh, and in the US in detail. We've got offices also there. Um, and we work in several uh, industries uh, in detail in the CPG, manufacturing, fashion retail and automotive. We are a, an SAP partner. We work a lot on the uh, SAP technologies around all the area of uh, planning and integration between planning to uh, manufacturing. Uh, if you can go ahead with the slides, uh, I would like to show you uh, our idea of, uh, uh, let me say, an integrated system or how an integrated system should work uh, once we talk about uh, industry for auto and uh, planning and manufacturing. Could you go ahead with the slides, please? Okay. Uh, this is yeah, yeah. Thank you. This is our our, our picture in terms of uh, uh, core range of the systems and uh, uh, several steps that usually are followed by our customers once they talk about uh, from strategic planning to manufacturing execution. In detail, we work uh, in the strategic and tactical planning with our with SAP solution mainly related to uh, components called SAP IBP uh, and SAP. Uh, demand-driven MRP and uh, production planning and detail scheduling. But what you can see in these slides is uh, one important stuff, that uh, uh, today an integrated system that is able to transfer data from high-level strategic goals, high-level strategic planning, and low-level, let me say, detail scheduling and manufacturing is mandatory. It's mandatory because we live in a world that is very, very uncertain you, you know very well that uh, a lot of stuff is, uh, is is changing and a lot of things are changing due to the covid and the integration between the different levels of planning and execution is now and today very very crucial the other topic that we will discuss later is how to use artificial intelligence and machine learning to improve the tools that are currently things today work it with, working with statistical algorithms and looking behind to understand what could happen uh, in the future. Uh, we will see also some examples uh, uh, in this direction. Uh, if you can go uh, ahead, I would like to talk about what are our customers asking us uh, uh, today. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, I try to summarize in one slide uh, what is usually, uh, let me say, the, what are usually today the big, uh, let me say, pains of our customer today. And it's very simple. Uh, or the, the first point or the first uh, um, topic is the uh, number four, the forecast accuracy. Today, we need to be as much as possible, uh, let me say, accurate in the forecasting in the first stages of the planning to avoid to have uh, delays and scraps uh, in the in, in the uh, let me say manufacturing and uh, operation phase uh, another topic that is uh, very very uh, let me say uh, important today in our customers is number five visibility uh, a lot of projects that we are currently doing are related to use control tower and technology like this uh, to improve visibility in the supply chain uh, the third point in terms of importance is what is usually called simulation scenarios. That is very, very related to the number one, finance integration. Simulation scenarios, why? Because we need today to try to build more than one scenario because there is a lot of uncertainty that we have to face with. Uh, and 
also the collaboration between all the different areas. Point number six uh, is very, very crucial today. We need to break up all the silos that are inside the company once we move from the strategic planning uh, uh, layer to the operational layer. If you can go ahead, we can go some, some more in detail about these topics. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is some examples of concrete, uh, of concrete benefits and applications. For example, uh, finance integration and simulation scenario. Uh, today, a lot of our customers are asking us uh, to be able to build up, uh, let me say, several scenarios in terms of planning and in terms of uh, uh, linking together all the uh, high level strategic uh, simulation to the low level uh, supply scenarios. This is one thing that is very, very easy to do with a unique platform like SAP IBP. And the other, the other important thing is uh, uh, inventory optimization. One of the big and crucial topics today is to define what are the safety stocks along the supply chain at every level of bill of material, especially for companies that are producing very, very complex products. Uh, if you go to the next slide, please, uh, we can go deeper inside the artificial intelligence topic. Um, and in particular, once we talk about forecast accuracy, we see uh, more and more needs today to use uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and data coming from, for example, social media and so on, social networks, sorry, and so on, to improve what is the accuracy of forecasting and the visibility that we have inside the uh, supply chain uh, processes. And last but not least, uh, break up all the silos to go deeper inside uh, collaborative scenarios that could link together supply and operations in one and unique uh, platform. In the next slide, and then I more or less finish my speech, we can see some examples. We work in several uh, sectors, not only in uh, not only in, uh, in in manufacturing, but in pharma. And here you can see what are the big advantages we achieve uh, introducing this kind of technologies in this kind of sectors uh, in pharma where there is a lot of problems related to merge and acquisitions and several companies are putting together, we work to improve network visibility. In sports where we're using uh, social media interaction to improve accuracy. In domestic appliance where the sales and operation planning is one of the key topics or in food and beverage, where inventory optimization and production line saturation is the key topic that we have to reach. This is only a brief and high level overview of uh, several projects we made in several kind of uh, sectors and how we approach which are the business benefits. All right, let me ask you a couple of questions and starting with uh, machine learning. How do you think that machine learning can improve forecasting load logic in, in your project and uh, in, in, in reality. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we've got an example, a company that is working in telecommunication. Uh, they have to forecast the quantity of the different models of mobile phones that they would like to offer with the uh, contracts. Uh, it's quite common in Italy, but not only that you buy a, a, a SIM, but you can also buy and rent the telephone. Uh, and as you can imagine, all the uh, different models of uh, uh, mobile phones uh, could be very different in terms of user acceptance. For example, iPhone 12 compared to iPhone 10 have got different kind of, uh, uh, let me say, market acceptance. For this company, we are integrating, for example, the classical IBP solution, SAP IBP, Integrated Business Planning, that is performing a typical uh, forecasting, let me say, algorithms with a kind of social, uh, social selling, social media listening. We are, uh, let me say, using the data coming from uh, social media like Twitter, Facebook, and so on to improve with machine learning the accuracy of forecasting. This is the only way to do this kind of, of job because uh, there are no statistical experience related to, for example, a new model of uh, a mobile phone that is not existing today and that I don't know uh, since the launch of the product, what could be the, uh, let me say, uh, a result on the market of this kind of uh, product. 
Now, uh, briefly, just to conclude, just another question. And what's the importance yeah. of using integrated execution scenarios in retail scheduling? Yeah, as, uh, um, as, I, uh, as I explain you, we are working not only in planning, but also in manufacturing and logistics. Uh, and we see uh, more and more that uh, uh, we need to have a real time feedback from the field in terms of, uh, for example, what happened on the shop, what happened on the, uh, let me say, retail chain, what happens on the uh, transportation chain to oh, wow. better, let me say, align my planning at different layers of planning with what happens on the field. To do this, uh, we are introducing, for example, technologies like uh, 5G, like edge computing, like industrial IoT, to be more and more, let me say, accurate in uh, reacting to what happens on the field with what we have on the uh, high level or the top floor uh, once we work on, uh, let me say, um, planning and scheduling at enterprise level. Well, thanks. Thanks again, Gianni Pellizzo. And Gianni Pellizzo al you. already introduced some real case history of company using this kind of systems and their approach. I want to get more with Alessandro Casartelli, sub-manufacturing consultant at Derga. Welcome. And uh, first of all, when it comes to improve quality standards and production quality, and uh, it's all about also the control processes. Now, how about the role that manufacturing execution systems can play in some real cases in the industries that you're covering? Yes, manufacturing execution system and industrial IoT are more and more rising as essential techniques to improve productivity and mitigate uh, manufacturing sore points. And in this context, I would like to present two real cases of small and medium enterprises that reach their goals investing in this technology supported by Derga. Hopefully, most of our audience will also recognize in similar problems and the requirement in their businesses too. Now, the first company is an important Italian high-quality biscuit manufacturer. And in the next slide, I have schematized a simplified production process that now I will go through very quickly just to underline some of the most relevant area of intervention. And the first phase that we can see consists in the dough preparation, which is performed by specialized dosing machine. The process then continues in a flow line with the forming and cooking machine. And at the end of this process, we already have our nude cookie ready. Now, a quality control is performed mainly to separate high quality biscuits from brokens that are then sold as second standard. The last step is clearly packaging. However, this step is also the bottleneck of the system. And therefore, prior of this step, uh, a in process warehouse is present. Moreover, as you can see, a wider environmentally controlled warehouse is also present to stock at the right temperature and at the right humidity the products that are waiting for the packaging. In this context, the implementation of the system focused on different aspects. First of all, the integration with machines. And just to make an example, consider the dosing machines. Before, for each and every production order, the operator had to manually upload and if required, also modify the receipt. And this resulted in possible errors or longer setup times. Also, quality control benefit from the integration. The count of broken pieces is now, in fact, assisted by automatic counters. However, what I believe is particularly interesting about this project is that not only Bashir, but also auxiliary system controllers and sensors have all been integrated. And this is due to the relevance of ambient parameters in this kind of process. So from lightning to temperature controllers, vents, compressed air system, all have been integrated together. And just to make an example, at the end of the last shift of Friday, they have to rapidly cool down all the machine. And this can be done either using compressed air or vents, but the former is way more efficient than the latter. So thanks to uh, the in real time control of the stock of air, they can guarantee to have enough to cool down the machine at the end of the last shift. And the last relevant point is all about real time visibility and control of the process. Thanks to the adoption of 
dashboards, shift manager, and production planner can have a quick overview of the status of their machine as well as the in-process warehouse. And this can help in creating a proper schedule of the production order and if required, also adopt countermeasures in order to guarantee a smooth process flow in the bottleneck, so in the packaging line. All this resulted in some significant improvement that I collected as KPIs in the next slide. And we can see that we go from increased productivity to higher quality, but also to the reduction of machine downtime. And I would like to underline this last KPI because in this particular project, we had not focused on maintenance. However, the client, by analyzing the data that we collect from machines, have been able to implement some preventive maintenance and in this way, reduce the overall maintenance downtime. And moreover, as you can see, we have been able to obtain, for example, full detailed digital traceability, which in the food industry is mandatory, as well as more reliable data and a better alignment between the physical stock and the logical stock present in their ERP system. The next scenario, which is in the next slide, refers instead to a manufacturing company specialized in the production of cosmetic product and in a business-to-business -business environment. And it is the name of the company's Cosmo project. And in this scenario, the project focused on some specific areas of interest. First of all, a detailed and specific management of raw materials, which can be extremely pricey. As a matter of fact, from one side, their customer required to have detailed traceability of those raw materials and then also need to have some kind of certification of, of their product. On the other side, internally, they need to have precise costing of each production orders and how those materials are consumed. Another important topic of intervention is related instead to the management of the workforce, which in this case is highly specialized. And in this context, first of all, we gave the possibility to operator to fastly perform clock in and clock out at the different work centers. And on the other side, supervisors have been provided with a scheduling application in which they can assign the different operators to each work center, while at the same time having an active control of their competencies and of their skill with warnings and limitations. And in fact, we are also connected to their ERP system, which is SAP, and in particular with the HR model. The next point of intervention is related to the integration with different shop floor areas. And I can, for example, make, uh, consider maintenance department or the warehouse. And in this context, we provided the client with an universal notification center in which push notifications are shipped to the right person, to the right user at events. For example, whenever the machine recovers a breakdown or when the operators requires the staging of more raw materials. Clearly, also in this case, uh, machine integration as well as real-time visibility, visibility and control uh, guided the whole project. And all this resulted in significant improvement in the process performances and in its control, with high level of satisfaction of Cosmo project customers as well as their employees. All right, Alessandro Casatelli, just in a couple of minutes, one question, couple of questions. First, what's next for technology? Where do you see the evolution of technology? Well, what I have described so far that is also what most of our customers are now implementing, I think is just the first step of what the technology can already provide and will more and more provide in the future. And I, in some way, made already an example uh, when I talked about the maintenance downtime for the first customer. And they use the data that we collected to improve their business process. And this is what companies traditionally always try to do for example, using statistical process control. But now we are providing our customer with an incredible large amount of real-time reliable data, and they can use those data to truly understand how their business process work and how external factors impact on their processes. 
And in this context, I believe that most companies will find wide ranges of improvement. And what is important to underline is that not only we are able to collect data, but we can also provide our customers with very powerful tool to help them analyze those data. And I can, for example, quote SAP Analytics Cloud for the business intelligence or SAP Leonardo IoT. So from one side, we have powerful business intelligent tools. And for the other, we have the support of mm -hmm. artificial intelligent algorithm of machine learning to study the data and get the most out of them. Now, Alessandro, I, I know it's a very complicated question in just a few seconds, but how do you see the role that humans will play in the intelligent factory? Well, I think that the role of human have, have already significantly changed in the last year, and it will even more in the next. And I can start from production operators or in general blue collars, and now they are no longer subjugated to repetitive tasks performed at the machine. Their role, their role now is to guarantee the highest quality of product and to collaborate with the machine or also with other departments in order to perform at best. And in particular, the collaboration between men and machine, but also between different departments, and we have seen it, we have also collaborative tools to help them, uh, will be the key to perform better. And in this sense, uh, they also will have more creative and more satisfying jobs. At higher level instead, we have seen that, uh, for example, controllers, uh, shift managers, production planners, uh, also their job will change significantly. Nowadays, they mostly uh, perform back office activities and they have strict control of, of what is happening in the shop floor. In the future, we expect them to uh, work on exception handling, on data analysis, on detail and optimization planning, or in improving mm -hmm. their business processes. And clearly, I, I must underline this, all this requires time, requires education, and most of all requires proper change management. But if done correctly, it can surely result in more satisfaction for the employees, and therefore also more loyalty for the company. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, more productivity, better focus on the customers, on the quality and on the results we provide to our customers. Yeah. So in general, a better working environment. Well, thank you for this, Alessandro. Let me move to Paola Cairella, so pre-sale manager for uh, BMS. And you know, Paola, this WMF has artificial intelligence as the main topic. We'll discuss this also tomorrow. But in your job, all these services that are based on AI, I mean, electronic vision, blockchain, and everything, allows you to perform new kind of services and interface between human and machine. So can you give us some example of what smart logistics services you're developing based on these technologies? Uh, yes, of course. First of all, good evening and thank you for this uh, invitation. I'm uh, happy to participate to this uh, World Manufacturing uh, Forum. Uh, first of all, uh, to answer to this uh, first question, I would like to make an overall um, introduction, a general introduction, about the fact that uh, what we can say that the, the new feature of artificial intelligence of uh, industrial IoTs, machine learning, uh, computer vision, distributed computing, blockchain, are uh, really creating a revolution in manufacturing industry, in the manufacturing uh, industry sector. In fact, uh, we can uh, speak uh, really of uh, uh, a mega trend. What I mean with mega trend? The mega trend can be explained as uh, a, a collection of powerful uh, changes and forces uh, that comes from uh, social, from environment, from uh, geographical situation. And uh, these changes cannot be avoided and cannot be uh, eliminated. So based on this, we are seeing that uh, the ever-growing automation of uh, some smart companies in uh, manufacturing are uh, introducing these new technologies, these new services, and are obtaining, of course, 
higher productivity level, higher efficiency, and uh, they are uh, more efficient and effective in any uh, step of their uh, logistic process. For instance, we can speak about uh, modern tools of uh, predictive analysis, and uh, these tools are able to collect a lot of data from the field, and uh, using this uh, uh, data, uh, our customers are able to control, for instance, the downtown, downtown management and to control uh, the, the fact that they uh, don't have hidden or sudden downtime on their machines because they are able to plan and predict uh, the maintenance activities. Another important topic that I want to say is about the increasingly recognition that this new services, these innovative technologies are impacting also the organization. And of course, the people that are part of, of this organization. Smart manufacturing companies are asking to the people to focus on uh, high level added value activities uh, relating of course all the, the the basic and the, re the repetitive activities uh, to the machine what is happening now it is that uh, through the use of uh, the innovative services artificial intelligence machine learning algorithm basically we succeed in supporting better the operators in their daily activities and uh, the um, the big change is also in how the people manage their senses in terms of sight and touch because these senses are enhanced through artificial intelligence services or industrial IoT. Okay. So the interface between the man and the machine, between the people and the machine is really changing. We have really an outturning paradigm. Because uh, in the past, we, and until now, we were used to say that uh, the machine is, um, the man is learning from machine, but now we have an opposite paradigm. That is, the machine are learning from the people and from the man. Um, what we have done as VAR BMS? VAR BMS has developed uh, many smart logistic uh, solutions, and uh, this allow the logistic operator to interact, uh, to interact with, the, uh, with the machine, with the computer system in a completely uh, new different wave. This means that we have uh, shorter execution time, uh, minimum errors, and of course uh, we have uh, a, a very, uh, very high productivity during uh, the, the logistic processes. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions. You can change the slide. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's go with your slides before. Okay. Okay. So uh, the, the slide describes uh, basically what I have already explained about the artificial intelligence. And you see that uh, through the digital core, digital platform, and smart technologies, we uh, have a different paradigm between. Uh, uh, men and uh, machine, okay? Okay, uh, now um, if you don't have uh, uh, any other question, I can uh, go ahead with uh, explaining some of our uh, smart logistics solution. This uh, solution is uh, named the missing trace uh, solution and uh, as I said before, as I said before, uh, we have this new paradigm between uh, machine and the people. So uh, what uh, I want to explain it is uh, that um, this missing trace solution is based uh, and focused on the usage of uh, usage of uh, chatbots. As you know, the chatbots are uh, vir uh, is a virtual assistant, and the vir virtual assistant can support users uh, during. Uh, all the business process that the user is doing and is uh, daily uh, running. Of course, uh, this virtual assistant, the chatbots, uh, can be uh, applied and used uh, not only in the extended supply chain, but also in the back office or the uh, useful support for the first level help desk. Okay. 
the important thing it is that the chatbots are virtual, virtual assistants that are always available and present for the operator and for the people who are working in the supply chain. So, thanks to uh, the new uh, innovative solution that we have used from SAP Cloud Platform, we see that there are uh, a lot of uh, new solutions and future innovation that we can explore and implement. Basically, Missing Trace is just one of the solutions that we have developed using the SAP, SAP Cloud Platform. And this solution is based on the fact that we support the logistic operator, the, the people, to uh, retrieve and uh, to, to search easily the components during the process of an assembly of a machine. During the process, uh, thanks to the, to the bot, to the chatbot, we uh, perform, the, the user perform a request and the, uh, the bot answer using a, a human language. Uh, for instance, is able to explain and uh, provide information about uh, the status of uh, the pieces or uh, uh, to provide information about the fact that there are uh, some uh, missing or delayed uh, deliveries from, uh, from the supplier. And of course, uh, this uh, solution provides uh, tangible benefits in terms of easiness of the job uh, on uh, um, a greater uh, reactivity during the, the, the decision in the logistic process and of course in efficiency. Okay. All right, thank you Paola, Paola Cairella. Thank you for this, I'll get back to you at the end of the session because I also want to uh, hear from Andrea Stella from Esperia. And here we move from the interaction between man and machine and systems to uh, what's the maintenance and predictive maintenance intelligence solutions. Uh, I think that you, you will introduce us to a uh, case history based on a utility, RetiPU, please, Andrea. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening to everybody. It's a pleasure to participate again to World Manufacturing Forum. Uh, okay, let's start two words uh, about Expedia. Expedia is an SAP partner uh, focused on industry for zero projects, uh, on uh, asset maintenance and IoT projects, uh, also focusing on product lifecycle projects and about sustainability and product uh, security. Um, now, we, we, uh, I will describe to you uh, an interesting project that we managed on uh, RetiPU, as you said, uh, an Italian company um, of the uh, utility sector managing uh, uh, gas network pipelines, uh, electrical networks, and uh, public uh, lighting systems. And uh, we manage uh, a project with them uh, in order to uh, to implementing uh, a predictive maintenance uh, tool, uh, giving them a, a kind of uh, solution and procedure uh, in order to better and improve uh, the asset management in order to assuring the efficiency and also the continuing of services uh, of their devices and the assets of their networks. Of course, when we speak about gas or electricity uh, furniture, uh, electricity, electricity delivery, it's very really important to, uh, to give the, uh, the certain service to, to the users. We can go directly to the next slide, please. Okay, uh, just a few words uh, about the landscape uh, of technologies and functionalities that we uh, use and develop for uh, for RTPU customer. Uh, we we have both uh, and both uh, landscape. Uh, on one hand, we have uh, some on prime um, premises uh, uh, SAP solution, basically the core ERP solutions uh, that already uh, were running on. Uh, RetiPU uh, company uh, and uh, also uh, especially uh, focusing also about the uh, basis and the uh, basis solution and objects uh, regarding uh, maintenance, asset maintenance uh, procedure. On the other hand, we introduced and activated uh, some uh, 
cloud uh, application and solutions. Uh, basically, uh, the main important uh, solutions uh, of sub SAP intelligent asset maintenance, in particular, asset intelligent network uh, that is a solution enabling uh, the digital twin of asset and equipment and predictive maintenance service to uh, use algorithms already out of box predictive algorithms to support and to better uh, maintenance procedure. Uh, aside this kind of out of the box solutions, we also activate uh, some and use some innovative innovative services by uh, SAP Cloud Platform, like uh, IoT enablement, like uh, uh, analytics, cloud, and other uh, services uh, giving us a possibility to, to introduce uh, a, a prepackaged solution by, SAP, by uh, Expedia called maintenance, uh, uh, simple maintenance, giving also some uh, smart application to maintenance operators to uh, manage and delivery maintenance uh, on the field uh, in the region where they do and they have to deliver maintenance in the different uh, devices. Next slide, please. If you uh, focus a little bit on uh, some solutions and procedure we uh, implemented in a step-by-step uh, approach. Uh, we started from the basis. We tried to understand with the company uh, which kind of uh, devices and the, the way to catalog and to set in different groups uh, this kind of dev uh, devices in order to start from the beginning uh, in a better uh, implementation of a uh, uh, maintenance procedure. Of course, starting from uh, reactive and preventive maintenance, that is a kind of maintenance that more or less 100% of the companies uh, are managing when they have a device to maintenance. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, also we uh, focus on the integration with some mapping and routing uh, uh, software because we are speaking about utilities and we speak about different networks and devices uh, spread around a quite a large region. Um, and uh, of course, uh, from let's say this kind of classical let's say uh, maintenance that is reactive preventive, we uh, move uh, further uh, to the condition-based maintenance and till to predict predictive maintenance. To do that, uh, we uh, needed to activate IoT connections. So we uh, connected uh, all the devices that uh, had to be maintained with maintenance. Serial, we connect them uh, and we uh, collect all the information by, by these uh, equipment like temperature, uh, like pressure, depending on the kind of, uh, of the solution or the kind of uh, device that we have to maintain. And we use this kind of information for one time, for one side, for monitoring this kind of uh, different devices, of course, we, we can see a picture of a, a control room uh, of a VTQ uh, company. But in the other hand, uh, IoT enable us to, uh, enable us to uh, have a set of information, a huge amount of information uh, to give to predictive maintenance the data they need to elaborate with an historical set of uh, information and calculation in order to uh, arrive to have um, a health state of each maintenance in order to uh, predict which kind of maintenance I have to uh, to plan and to deliver for each kind of, uh, of um, device of equipment or asset uh, in order to reduce the time uh, redu and improve in particular improve the efficiency of our, our equipment and also to reduce the cost of maintenance uh, procedure. We can go to the next slide, please. Uh, aside uh, the implementation of the uh, core uh, solution by uh, uh, Intelligent Asset Maintenance uh, Management uh, Suite by SAP, we also introduced, uh, like I said before, uh, a set of mobile apps uh, dedicated to maintenance operators. Uh, because in this kind of situation, uh, we had operators uh, traveling uh, and all around uh, the uh, wide region going to where uh, there are uh, 
devices to uh, to be maintained uh, for reactive, for some incidents uh, that are uh, created by uh, everybody uh, or uh, according to the predictive or uh, preventive maintenance uh, scheduling uh, and uh, this kind of uh, apps uh, uh, can be run uh, by a, an easy smartphone or uh, by a tablet and give the, the the operators uh, a set of solutions for example they can see the list of the orders that i have to do to uh, to do uh, and to uh, uh, to delivery uh, today or in the next week uh, i can also see all the information about the single equipment that i have to uh, to maintain uh, or i, I can i can uh, access to some documents like uh, maintenance procedure like uh, data regarding uh, the equipment or some safety uh, procedure that i have uh, i have to respect in order to work in a safety way uh, of course this kind of application give also an integration with all the ERP information so I can I can use a component that I need to to, to repair or to substitute some spare parts uh, and I can also declare how many time spent uh, in my activities in order to uh, to uh, collect all the information that uh, I finally needed uh, I needed to uh, to manage cost and also to have all the information to create KPI for to understand how is the uh, state of art uh, and how is are the numbers uh, regarding my process, uh, maintenance process. And finally, of course, the integration with the mapping uh, tools uh, or uh, around the region or also for uh, typical manufacturing companies uh, in a single uh, uh, plant, for example. For manufacturing company, uh, I, I have no region uh, spread uh, or share uh, devices but uh, i have some devices machines uh, in a single uh, plant and i have to know where i have to do uh, the uh, the maintenance uh, and which kind of incident or which kind of work order i have to uh, to manage in a single uh, particular uh, equipment okay we can go to the next slide of course uh, we have a step-by-step -step approach for managing this uh, important project. Uh, of course, we starting, uh, we focus uh, on uh, only one uh, kind of uh, equipment that are the gas network and pipelines. Uh, and on that, we built the model, the model that was the basis for all of the uh, in, uh, following uh, maintenance procedure implementation and aside this we uh, activate uh, the mobile apps uh, giving uh, from the first day of the uses of the system uh, this kind of uh, smart application uh, for uh, maintenance operators uh, then we uh, enlarge the model and we roll out the model to other different kind of uh, of equipment like uh, um, electrical networks and uh, public system uh, for um, uh, lighting uh, and then we focus uh, on the predictive maintenance uh, activating the iot connection and uh, predictive maintenance for all these kinds of uh, of equipment and finally uh, we uh, also focusing on uh, improve uh, planning and scheduling procedure uh, with the uh, specific uh, the tools by SAP in order to uh, support uh, the planners, maintenance planners to allocate and to schedule in the, the best way uh, all the maintenance operators. All right. So thank you so much, Andre, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for providing such a diverse uh, vision of case study and experience that you shared today. Uh, there's just time for a quick wrap up with a quick Q&A session that I want to introduce asking you, Andrea. Do you have any suggestion for companies that are trying and starting to approach innovation in this field of intelligent asset management? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a good question. Let, let's say it's important that uh, they need to have clear uh, where they want to, 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 to arrive, of course, because 
when we speak about intelligent task management and particular predictive maintenance, uh, everybody speaks about that, but um, sometimes uh, the most part of the companies are focused on classic, uh, let's say, uh, maintenance procedure like uh, reactive and uh, preventive. Um, there is, uh, it's important to, to change the approach and which step I have to do to fit this kind of uh, modern and uh, sophisticated kind of uh, maintenance. Uh, it's something that I have to do step by step, but of course, uh, when I reach the, the end of, 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 of this journey, let's say, uh, I can have really uh, good uh, improvements of my uh, maintenance processes, and I can also uh, reach uh, really good advantages. For example, in the kind of uh, uh, this kind of uh, customer at the uh, company, uh, they now are activating a platform uh, for uh, giving citizens some applications uh, that uh, allow everybody to understand uh, some information about the gas networks, about the uh, lighting, uh, public lighting system, and also giving a, 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 every citizen a tool to um, uh, to claim, to give information about how uh, the service is going. If uh, a, a light uh, is uh, is uh, downtown or, uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, or if something is working not uh, very well. And we are collecting all this information and we're integrating them with the maintenance system of, uh, of our company. Uh, and so directly by the citizen, we, uh, we start the incident procedure and then with the uh, intelligent answer manager by SAP, we're able to manage this incident to uh, create the correction, uh, the corrective action and work orders in order to, to fix the problem, to solve the problem, and then to give back the information to the citizen, uh, saying to them, okay, uh, we understand your incident, we manage that and we solve uh, it. I think it's, uh, it's a good point to reach. It's an example uh, where I can, I can arrive when I start this kind of journey. All right. Thank you, Andrea Stella. Let me move to Paola, Paola Cairella. So in terms of innovation, Paola Cairella, if you had to wrap it up and sum up, what makes you different in your solution at VARA BMS? I think that uh, we have a really uh, very interesting solution also related to the possibility to use uh, augmented reality and to uh, the capability to enhance human senses. Um, I want to explain about our interesting solution that is named uh, IPIC. Uh, this uh, solution is a solution that allows uh, you to uh, extend the human sensing and uh, to uh, use just a glance, uh, also from a longer distance, to recognize objects or to found uh, objects and to uh, make activities that with uh, only your naked eye you know, you, can, you cannot do. This uh, interesting solution that uh, enhances human senses can be used with uh, smart glasses or uh, a mobile device, so you can use this solution uh, on, an industrial, uh, on an industrial PC. And so in this way, you can improve uh, the productivity during the supply chain because uh, using uh, this uh, solution, you have to, uh, you are able to pick uh, materials and you have no errors during the process of uh, picking uh, good issue, good receipt, uh, storage movements and so on. In this way, we can say that uh, during all of the supply chain, supply chain processes, you can use uh, uh, this uh, IP uh, uh, technical solution to improve uh, all of mm -hmm. these uh, steps. And also the training time of the operators, of the logistic operators, is really short uh, with mm -hmm. the respect standard uh, solution. Okay. All right. Okay, so, perfect. Finally, what I can say is that uh, we, uh, as a VARBMS, we are part of a big ICT group in Italy that is named uh, VAR Group, and so we have access to research center and also to many startups that are uh, a source of uh, new ideas, a source of uh, inspirations, and so I think that we are uh, 
after uh, over 20 years of uh, SAP partnership, uh, we are for sure able to provide a technical and a smart uh, solution. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paola Cairella. Let me move to Alessandro Casartelli. Alessandro, compared with well-established and historical solution in industrial automation, how does your technology and your project and solution differentiate? But I think that there are so many different differences that I cannot even list all of them. But if I have to focus only maybe on just one difference is that today the technology in the manufacturing shop floor is not just about improving productivity as it, as it has been in the past, but it's about improving also the flexibility and improving the quality and the results for the customers. And in this way, clearly, uh, I think that it is important that the clients approach this kind of technology with a very open mind in order to take the best of what we can offer and also as some of my colleagues already underline to create a step-by-step -step implementation process with the right partner which can, which can guide towards uh, all the benefits of this solution. And yeah. with 30 and past years of SAP partnership and many projects also in the manufacturing execution system, uh, Derga Consulting can provide uh, the best out of this. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Alessandro. Let me end up our second round with uh, Gianni Pellizzo. Uh, so Gianni Pellizzo, what's the next step you would suggest to customers that are trying to build up and take a build in the future of their manufacturing strategy? <laughs> Yeah, it's quite easy to reply to your question with a lot of buzzwords like uh, IoT, edge computing, machine learning, and so on. But uh, my, my real, uh, let me say, suggestion is uh, to, uh, let me say, think about what are the planning systems of the future or the planning systems that uh, this kind of period that we are living are, 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 are necessary to implement. And from my point of view, we have to focus on three big characteristics. We have to improve the accuracy in forecasting and planning. We have to increase visibility of this kind of systems. And then we have to go, uh, let me say, in a direction of uh, uh, having real-time integrated systems. All the other kind of technologies are only used to gain this kind of objectives, from my point of view. Uh, technologies are very important, but uh, accuracy, visibility, and from my point of view, real-time integrated systems are the three big factors of a successful uh, manufacturing system for this uh, special era that we are living right now. All right, thanks again. And uh, Giacomo Coppi, all the colleagues, they brought us some fields and the sense of the experience from the front line, you know, from the real experience from companies and projects and so on. What's your sense of all of this? What's your takeaway that you would like to leave to the audience? Well, I think we experience uh, some great example provided deployed uh, from our partners to our customer base. But I, I would like also to take the occasion to introduce uh, a, a topic that is quite relevant for everyone. That is how SAP is addressing sustainability overall and that are gonna be one of the more strategic pillar of our offering in the next future. And it will involve also our partners investment and uh, the direction of the digital transformation of many, many customers. And uh, so I'd like to highlight how the sustainability is not just a trend anymore, it's a, it's a fact. It's something that is affecting the investment of many customers, of, uh, of many industries, and is affecting the life of many employees. So that are, are quite effective and quite relevant. And we then know that the climate action, the climate change is in the agenda of all the CEO of uh, all the most relevant organization around the world. And so, in order to support our customers in this direction, we launched a program Climate 21 that want to touch the ecological, economical, and social side of climate change and sustainability overall. That means for us that we are going to address the roadmaps of our products in order to provide the capability of sustainability inside as best practices for our, from our technology and our application. And in design to operate, it is the area we cover in my introduction, um, it means uh, provide the customers with application able to provide KPIs, to follow best practices, to provide data and reporting relevant for the sustainability, 
and the carbon footprint of product, of assets, of factory, and so on. This is a strategic direction, so we will see our roadmap totally affected by the Climate 21 in the near future. That means uh, effect that will touch not just the enterprise, but will touch the business operation overall, so the, the, the whole of the value chain, and of course, the customers, the customers of our customers. Well, for sure. In any, whatever sectors you work with in any company, these dimensions, sustainability, is crucial and will be even more crucial in the future. Thanks again, Giacomo sure, Coppi. Thank Thanks to all the colleagues.